we're going to talk about how the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum came to be. Les Bowman, the rifle expert and test expert living west of Cody, Wyoming, about 40 miles on a small ranch that he had, guided many, many elk hunters into the high country of Wyoming, sheep hunters, grizzly hunters and so forth. And over the years, because of the lay of the country, the mountains, the kind of open country, Les found that we needed a rifle that was reasonably comfortable to shoot. Les had access to almost any rifle caliber or rifle cartridge, testing almost anything that was made. He had a 300 Weatherby. And he liked the 300 Weatherby, except for the fact he didn't like the recoil. And most hunters that he had in the mountains over the years couldn't shoot a 300 Weatherby. It had enough energy to kill elk at considerable distance, and Les's idea was considerable distance was about 500 yards. He thought that's a, about as far as a guy ought to try to shoot game was 500 yards. So he had been using a 275 H&H &H Magnum that Jack O'Connor gave him. It was a custom-built rifle by one of the country's custom gun people. And he had a 7x61 sharpened heart that he acquired. But it didn't have, neither one of those cartridges had quite the velocity that he felt was necessary to take elk out to about 500 yards. He wanted to shoot 160 grain bullet at around 3,150 feet a second. So having worked with various other cartridges and so forth at that time, Les took the 338 Winchester Magnum case and necked it down to 7 millimeter. He went to, to, to Fred Huntington at RCBS and had special dies made to be able to do that. And the very first reloading dies made were stamped 280 338 Magnum because really 7 millimeter hadn't been coined yet as as a designation for a cartridge in this country really 280 caliber was basically how it was referred to so that the die the very first dies were stamped 280 338 Magnum from RCBS then once he had those, then he had, he had somebody barrel an action for him, and so he could test what he, you know, had come up with, and he went to, to Pfeiffer Rifle Company, and he had a barrel fitted to an action that he had. He also, over, over a period of time, had P.O. Ackley do the same thing. He tried different barrels from different makers and so forth to see what might be the best choice. And anyway, I've seen those early rifles. Les was a very, very close friend of mine, and we worked very, very close together testing rifles and so forth. And once Les had used these rifles for a couple seasons and had some clients of his that he took into the mountains hunting elk and, and sheep and so forth, moose, grizzly. He decided that this was, was what he wanted, was a cartridge shooting a 160 grain bullet at about 3,150 feet a second. And some of the people that he, that he had in the mountains, two specific people were, were Wayne Leake and Mike Walker from Remington Arms. These two fellows were design engineers for Remington. And so they used they used the 280 B 338 Magnum in the high country of Wyoming to kill elk with Les Bowman. And with this in mind, he got Remington interested and perhaps that cartridge in one of their 
in one of the in the in a Remington rifle built by Remington Arms. So they went back home and they discussed it with other people in at Remington, Wayne and and uh, and Mike, and they contacted Les and told him that they wanted him to come to to, to Remington in Ilion, New York, and and discuss this project and so forth, which he did. He spent time back there staying with staying with, with Mike and his wife Olive. And in during these discussions it was discussed how many rifles can we sell in a year, how much ammunition can we sell in a year, because this is a considerable layout. This is an entirely new adventure, you know, for Remington. They had they had the, the straight 280 Remington cartridge and they sold rifles in that caliber and they felt that it would probably deal deal somewhat of a death blow to the 280 Remington if they if they came out with less, with this cartridge of lessons and so they discussed all these things and thought about it and they were hardly lukewarm hardly lukewarm with the idea so after having been back there for a week or so visiting with all those people, Les came home and he didn't know where anything was going to go and in about two weeks uh, the phone rang and 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 it was it was uh, Mike Walker and informing Les that they've decided to to head forward with this project of coming out with with the cartridge that he basically came up with and they were going to call it the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. This is how this is how the seven millimeter Remington Magnum came to be. There's been things printed by people that really don't know the story like I know the story. I know the the whole story from from forward to back and we could probably talk for an hour and a half about this but that's not necessary to to make the point that Les Bowman developed a seven Remington Magnum with the idea that he needed 1,800 foot-pounds of remaining residual energy at 500 yards to reliably kill kill a bull elk at that distance. That was the minimum acceptable energy and he used 160 grain spear bullets, 160 grain Sierra bullets, and 160 grain Nosler partitions. The Nosler partitions were hands down the best choice as far as is the game bullet, but he shot game with with all three of those bullets, and so we know now after many many years that once that seven Remington Magnum came out in 1962 in the newly designed by Wayne and Mike Leake of Remington Arms, and the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. We know that this is one of the most popular cartridges, rifle combinations that's ever been produced in this country for hunting western game. And but since that since that time we've had various various people that have used this seven rail meter Remington Magnum, stretched the range way, 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 way beyond the capabilities of reliably taking game. We've got people that have, have have promoted it as a cartridge to use in a in a in a hunting rifle to shoot game at a thousand yards or maybe even further. It is not, never was intended by the founder of this cartridge or Remington Arms that you ever take game at those extreme, extreme distances. They, they bought into Les's idea to 500 yards and the energy idea and I still think that this is a, this is a sound place to stop with that cartridge. I honestly feel that it's, it's lacking even at 500 yards. I think it's an honest maybe 400 yard L cartridge. I've done my share of taking game with that cartridge. I, after using that for a few years, I was building rifles on bigger, bigger cartridge cases to to 
get higher velocity and even a heavier bullet, a 175 grain bullet, like a nozzle partition or a 175 Hornady interlock. And that, that stretches our ranges out considerably, maybe out to 700, 700 yards or so, maybe 800 yards. And I've personally taken, you know, a considerable number of elk over my 53 years of, of hunting elk you know, between about six and seven hundred yards and one elk at eight and a quarter. And personally, I'm a capable enough hunter that I can get closer in almost any instance, you know, and close that gap to probably half of, of 600 yards. Most of our game is killed inside of about 250 yards, no matter where we're hunting. And there's hardly ever any, any situation where we can't get closer. And if we can't get closer, using something as small as a seven Remington mag to kill elk, then we just simply need to not, not pull the trigger on an animal at some of these extreme distances with the aspect of, of wounding it and so forth. So I wanted to set the record straight for everybody, especially, especially people that have, have said that really don't understand how this all came to be you know, who, whose idea it was. Les Bowman made the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 7mm caliber very popular in this country. The credit, the credit goes to Les Bowman. There were other people shooting various different 7mm, 280s, whatever you wanted to call them at the time, but they, they were not the people. You know, whoever may have been mentioned over the years they were not the people that, that sold the idea and, and made, you know, made it possible for Remington see, to see the light to come out with that, with that cartridge.